Uh, just a quick few thoughts about this. This isn't really a sermon. It's more like a meditation for the day. But I wonder how many of you have ever seen an angel? Anybody seen an angel before? Well, in the story that we read 2,000 years ago, we read that shepherds were out in their fields watching their flocks by night. So it wasn't the middle of winter. It was probably lambing season. So it's probably the springtime when this story occurred. And there were shepherds watching over their sheep while they were lambing. Really vulnerable time for sheep. And the shepherds were considered pretty low paid jobs. They were lowly workers. And over the next three days, tonight, tomorrow morning, and on Sunday morning, because of the way the, it works, I'm going to preach three little sermonettes on Jesus appearing to angels, to shepherds, and to wise guys from the east, wise men. Jesus appeared to extraterrestrials. He appeared to really lowly, low-paid people. And he appeared to scientists who were very wealthy. He appeared to everybody. Tonight, we're going to talk about the angels that announced the birth of Jesus. And he appeared to these angels. The shepherds, they were in the field and they were watching and guarding their sheep. And all of a sudden, an angel appeared in front of the angels. What would you do if you were lying in bed one night and an angel appeared in front of you? Freak out. Go get a COVID test, probably. I don't know. Um, what would you do if you're driving in the car and you look in the rear vision mirror and there's an angel in your back seat? Freak out. Suddenly, we read in verse 9 that an angel appeared. <coughs> now, here's the thing. The angel appeared. It doesn't mean he wasn't there. He just appeared. One of the things you're going to learn if you know your, your spiritual world and you know the biblical world is that there are angels everywhere. There are angels in this building now, but you can't see them. Not with your physical eyes. In fact, the Bible teaches that every human being has a guardian angel. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I tell you what, when you're really desperate and you really, 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 really are in trouble, and that's when people pray, you might find that God would send you an angel. The thing about angels is they only appear when they want to appear. But there are angels everywhere, and there are also dark angels that are out to destroy and hurt and kill people. But God's angels are everywhere and they are here to protect us and to send us messengers. They are messengers of God. That's what they did in this story. When the angel appeared, one angel appeared to the shepherds, the angel had a message. And when the angel appeared, the Bible says that God's glory shone all around. Light was everywhere. Now, have you ever had any of those glow-in-the-dark toys? You know, I was going to bring one tonight, but I didn't have any. I gave them all to my grandchildren already. But what happens when you get a glow-in-the-dark toy and you shine a bright light on it? It goes bright, turn all the lights off. Whoa! That's what happened to the angels. They were like the iridescent parts of your watch. They were with God. And God shone his holy light onto them, and they were iridescent. When they appeared, there was light everywhere. It wasn't the light of the angels. It was the light from God reflecting off the angels to the place. All of a sudden, there's light everywhere, and there's this angel coming to talk to the shepherds. I guarantee if that happened to you or me, it would probably separate our head from our shoulders. It would be scary. An angel appearing, a glow-in-the-dark angel, <laughs> even more to the point. 
And when you read the text, in the Greek, it said that they feared a great fear. They were really, really scared. In, in, standing in front of the angels was one of the most powerful beings in the universe, an ET, an extraterrestrial. And then suddenly, the angel said to him, what do you think an angel would say when he appears to human beings? Don't be afraid. They'd be, they'd be really scared. The angel needed to calm them down. Don't be afraid. Now, there's a reason why angels have to tell you that. Because people get really, really scared. But the angel said, calm down. Focus over here and not over there. <laughs> Thank you for that. Focus, because I've got some really good news for you. The angel came to bring really good news. Is there anybody who wants to hear really good news today? Like, are you sick of it? Have you had enough of this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's only going to last for another five years. So, everybody wants to hear good news. Back then, if you lived in Judea and you were a shepherd, you understand that the Roman Empire was the force that had controlled all that area, that they were the occupying force. Judea had been overrun and taken control of by the Romans. They wanted good news. And in every generation, people have wanted good news. And I stand before you today and say, I would really like some good news today. With everything else that's going on, and all the media, and all the social stuff, we want some really good news. That's why the angel said, don't be afraid, because I've got some really, really great news for you. And guess what? This news has nothing to do with lockdowns and mandates. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> this good news is for all the people of the whole world, not Christians, for the whole world, all the people of the whole world, here's the good news, you've been rescued. The Saviour has come to rescue you. And you're going to say, hang on a minute, I'm not drowning. Are you kidding me? You don't think that we are drowning at the moment? Not physically, but spiritually. You don't think the world has lost, is lost. It has no idea what it's doing. And the angel came to tell us that there is a saviour who can help us and get us out of this mess. That is really good news. He was born for you and for me. That's what the angel said. That's if you want to be rescued. If you don't want to be rescued, that's okay. Just keep doing what you're doing and, um, you know, enjoy your life. But for the rest of us who feel like we need to be rescued... There's some really good news. The Saviour's been born, and here's the sign. You'll find a little baby wrapped in cloths and placed in a manger. Now, that's just part of the story that we know, but if you come over here with me, that is an historical event. This whole thing happened in history. It's not a story. It's history. It's part of history. You go back and, oh, I only read about that in the Bible. No, you don't. You read that in the other historical books of the time. This is a historical event. A saviour was born, and it's, a, it's not a story. It's history. It's part of history. It's about as specific as you can get. He's in this place, at this time, in this stable. That's not bad. He's not hard to find if you want to find him. It's like angels. They're not hard to see if you want to see them. Well, at this stage, the shepherds are totally freaked. Like, this is amazing. Angel appears, glow in the dark, and tells us that we're going to be rescued. And they're thinking, how are we going to be rescued? You mean this baby is going to overrun the Roman Empire? Nope, he's not talking about that sort of rescue. 
The Saviour isn't here to rescue you just from hard times. The Saviour is here to rescue you from yourself and myself, our rebellious self. The part of me that says, I want to do for my life what I want to do, that always gets us into trouble. Mm. God's got a plan for your life, and that's a way better plan. Well, if you don't think that was bad enough, if that wasn't enough, all of a sudden, a great host of angels appeared. Now they're really freaked out. It's like the whole place is glow in the dark. Angels everywhere, appearing everywhere, singing. That's just like here. You can't see them. There are angels up in the balcony. There are angels all over this place. Spiritual beings. ETs. ET does exist. Angels. They are real beings. They're not human beings. And they're not little babies that sit on clouds firing little arrows and playing um, harps, <laughs> chubby babies. No, these are created beings that God made called angels. And these angels came everywhere. If the, te- if the shepherds weren't terrified enough, now there's, in the Greek, there was a plethora of angels. There was everywhere angels. And listen to the message. Here's the message. To reinforce what the one angel said, here's the message. Glory to God in the highest place of everything. This God who is over everything. The ultimate supreme God. Peace to people on earth on whom his favour rests. Think about that. God's peace can be... On people on whom his favour rests. The $64,000 question is, does God's favour rest on you? Do you have God's peace? Well, how do you know? It's really easy. When you have the peace of God, you are able to live your life in spite of your circumstances. Your circumstances can be good, can be bad, whatever the situation is. But peace comes from God, not man-made peace, not the cessation of hostility, but peace from God can come on you when you know God, his favour rests on you, and you can navigate all your life circumstances in peace. That's amazing. Well, if you want to hear more about that, you've got to come tomorrow morning because I'll do part two of what happened to the shepherds when they heard this message about a saviour and peace. What did they do? So let me leave you with this thought. What's your take home from this narrative we've read tonight? Well, the first thing I want you to know is that there is a spiritual world out there that many people may not be aware of, but it exists. And those of us who work in the spiritual world understand that and and we can tell you that angels exist. Some people have actually seen angels. And they haven't been able to distinguish them from other human beings. So sometimes angels look exactly like human beings. And they speak our language. And they are everywhere and they have been sent by God to give you a message. That's That's what Angelos is, a messenger. And the glory of the angels is the byproduct of when they stand in the presence of God. It's glow in the dark. And this event that we see is a historical event. It's not a story. It's not something kids you see on TV. It's an historical event that people study. And the historical event was a message from God to the whole human race. You can have peace. Now, that might be hard to believe in the world that we live now, where for one year, every church in the world was almost closed down. And people are living in fear and anxiety and depression. You can have God's peace. It's available to you. That's what the angels were telling the shepherds. That's what I'm telling you tonight. That's what other people will tell you. You can have God's peace 
because a Saviour's been born. He can rescue you. If your favour, if God's favour rests on you, you have God's peace. How do you get God's favour? Well, you get right with God. You get right with God. You tell God that you're sorry for what you've done in your life and you ask him to forgive you. Then his favour will rest on you. If you say to God, nah, not interested, don't even believe in you, his favour's not going to rest on you. But if you say, listen, God, I, I, I need you. I need a saviour. I need somebody to help me. His favour will rest on you. You'll hear more about that tomorrow. If you're here tonight and you would like to know this saviour or you would like to know God's peace, um, I'd like to pray for you right now. And then we'll get on with the rest of the service. So let me pray and um, we'll get on to the last part of the service. Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you that the birth of Jesus is not just a story, it's an historical event where the saviour of the universe came to bring us peace. And I pray that if there's anybody here tonight that needs your peace, would you help them to open their heart to you? Would you come into their life? Would you remind them that we need to forgive, uh, we need to ask you to forgive us of all the things we've done wrong? And we promise to live for you. We thank you that you are a loving God that wants to bring peace and salvation and goodwill. And so we commend ourselves to you now in Jesus' name. Amen.